everyone. Really, really happy to be here. Um, and really, really excited uh, to tell you more about our existing foundational applications like um, uh, the Launchpad, uh, NFTs, DEX, and the Bridge. And let me start with the Launchpad. First of all, I want to mention that uh, Launchpad uh, will become actually X Launchpad pretty soon. Um, and um, um, maybe zooming out a little bit, I want to uh, reiterate uh, the main goal for the Launchpad and uh, our vision. And basically, the idea is um, we are backing up determined teams, uh, solving hard problems with global impact. Ideas originating anywhere in the world can now uh, be supported by anyone through blockchain technology. Um, hardcore teams can build amazing products uh, via decentralized funding and tap into our expanding ecosystem and into our global and passionate community. Um, since we launched uh, X, my launchpad, now X launchpad, one year ago, we've seen more than 1,500 uh, teams applying to be part of the Launchpad. Uh, four of them were selected until now. You probably already know them. It's Holoride, Ethium, Cantina Royale, and uh, AshSwap. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, numbers. So until now, um, uh, all those uh, Launchpad projects uh, raised more than $10 million. Uh, from around more than 100,000 uh, 100, uh, unique participants. And uh, basically, uh, all these projects, for all these projects, more than $100 million were committed. And the reason for this is that basically all those projects were oversubscribed, some of them even uh, up to 15 times. Uh, for example, AshSwap, the, least, the, the latest launchpad that uh, finished their round last week, uh, they managed to sell uh, more than 330,000 uh, lottery tickets or launchpad tickets. And this means that more than 300,000 uh, e-gold were committed. Uh, that's the equivalent of around uh, $17 million uh, uh, um, for a round of $2.8 million. It's like six times uh, subscribed. And this is remarkable considering the market uh, uh, context. Um, Next, uh, I want to talk a little bit what uh, uh, will come to, to the Launchpad. And maybe uh, one th the first thing I want to mention is more Launchpad platforms. Uh, some of you uh, heard probably of Be Hero, one of the first Launchpad platforms from our community. Um, The idea is there are so many great projects building uh, on Elrond, and we feel like we cannot support all of those. So we are encouraging other uh, actors, players in the Elrond ecosystem to build their own launchpad uh, platforms. Of course, each uh, launchpad platform uh, like this will come with, it, with its own process in terms of KYC requirements, due, di due diligence. Moving forward, um, let's talk about a little bit about KYC. And the first thing I want to mention is that we hear you. We know that for many of you, the KYC process was a little bit challenging. Um, and maybe one thing here to add is that, first of all, KYC process is required due to regulations. Secondly, the KYC process in general, not just for us, but for all the services and products out there, it's, it's challenging. But we are actively looking into uh, optimizing it and improving it. Talking about uh, maybe one of the most uh, uh, requested feature from uh, LockMax holders. Are any LockMax holders here? Okay, that's good. So one of the most requested uh, features for, uh, from them, and arguably one of the most exciting one, is to be able to participate in Launchpad based on your LKMX uh, holdings. We'll talk a bit. <laughs> the good thing is for Eagle holders. Are any Eagle holders here? 
the good thing, uh, uh, eGold uh, tiers, uh, and, and based on the eGold staked, will run in parallel with the tiers from LockMax. So basically, now you'll be able to, to be eligible from, for, for your eGold staked and for LockMax as well to participate in the next launchpads. Um, Having said that, it goes without saying that uh, the current market will continue, we will continue, even despite the current market, to build and support other builders. So expect more projects to come uh, on X Launchpad. Next, uh, I want to talk about Inspired Art that we launched a couple of months ago and that has been incredi incredibly uh, well received by our community. With Inspire Arts, the idea was to build a hub for all the blockchains, uh, for all the NFT projects that are alive in our blockchain, and uh, spotlight the most amazing ones, um, and find, create a platform for those projects and the artists, creators to be discovered, and a way for them to grow their community in a meaningful way. On the other hand, Inspired Art is not a marketplace but we, we integrated the most, most popular uh, marketplaces there. And uh, this makes buying an NFT display there a very intuitive uh, process. Of course, we'll soon see Inspire Art becoming X Spotlight and even a more meaningful stage for artists and creators of all kinds. When Going to what will happen next with the export light, the, um, pretty soon we're going to launch a revamped uh, website uh, with a new UI. Here is a screenshot of the, of, the of the homepage. And basically, there are a few improvements that uh, will become available pretty soon once we, we launch X uh, Spotlight. Uh, and I, I'll just mention, I think they are already there. Uh, we are basically all the creator parties uh, re, re, refactored. Also, uh, the explore section is uh, uh, rethink from, from the ground up. The collections comes with uh, some new filters, some new uh, ratings, and, uh, and other stuff like that. I'm really excited uh, that this is actually uh, ready and will come live pretty, pretty soon, as mentioned on xpotlight.com. Uh, um, next, what do you think we should talk next? <laughs> that's, that's the one. <laughs> So let's talk about the DEX, where we are first and its future. Um, automated market makers are an important breakthrough, adding efficiency to market liquidity in a decentralized way. That's why MyRDEX is such an important piece of the puzzle of our ecosystem. Basically, it gives all the ESDT tokens their uh, liquidity and enables swapping. MyRDEX was launched almost one year ago, and since then, more than 2.5 million um, trades were processed by, by uh, MyRDEX. And this means more, a volume of more than $4 billion. Um, although we are still very early, I like this. Uh, in the last year, we introduced a several new and in innovative features, and I'm just going to go over those really, really fast. Uh, the meta staking is a way of earning dual yields in the world. Then we have the meta bonding. Meta bonding is a way for any project to connect with our vibrant community. Right now, there are more than seven projects live there, and more, more will come. And of course, we have the launch. Launch basically is a way for Launchpad projects to get listed on MyRDEX using the price discovery mechanism. And then, of course, there is the Jungle Dex, the Auto Router, and others. But maybe the most interesting and unique uh, thing about MyRDEX is the LockMax or LKMAX and the usage of, of SFTs. And I just want to stress this fact that uh, also it's a little bit technical. The idea is 
Maya Dex uses very extensively these SFTs. SFTs are probably are familiar more with the term NFTs, non-fungible tokens, SFTs, semi-fungible tokens. And basically what's unique in this regard is instead of uh, keeping the information about, let's say, a user position in a liquidity pool or in a farm, in a smart contract, like almost all the other um, DEXs are doing. Basically, we keep this information at the user level in a, like a meta information or like an information written inside this token, this SFT. And this is very unique because it gives you a lot of uh, freedom uh, and very interesting approaches. As well, Lock, LockMax is an SFT and it's uh, very interesting, although it's a lock token, you still can use it. For example, to provide liquidity, you can use it in a farm, you can stake it, meta bonding or in a, in a staking uh, pool. Uh, and this is a very interesting approach, a, a very interesting approach and very unique, as I said, from a design point of view, but from a technical point of view, but also from a game design point of view. Um, while all this be, might be very impressive for a first year, we knew from the beginning that this is not enough. And frankly, we can do so much better. That's why the first max economic model, if you know, only covered the first year. That's why right now we are ready to move to the next phase. What is here, so-called DEX 2.0, or even better, X exchange. <laughs> so, as mentioned before, decentralized exchanges have brought a significant breakthrough in bootstrapping liquidity. However, all known DEX economic models suffer from a crippling affliction. And the idea is there is a gross misalignment between the growth of uh, DEX and the value accrual of the native token. That's why with DEX 2.0, we are redesigning some of the key elements that significantly, significantly improves uh, the, the value accrual mechanism. And this means a maximum cap supply for max and also a novel concept for lock max that um, has fo wide foundational implications and that is the energy the locked max hold. So, um, in DEX 2.0, a max token, once it is locked, acts as a battery. So, locked max, the battery can then be charged, filled in with energy. And this energy gives you a lot of benefits and rewards, as you'll see pretty, pretty soon. And while enjoying this, these benefits, um, the energy is uh, consumed until no energy remains in that locked max. And at that point, you can choose to convert it to max if you want or we can go to a new cycle and basically recharge the locked max and then join uh, again those benefits. And here the main idea, the key point is the more time you lock your locked max, the more, more energy you're gonna have and of course more benefits and more rewards. As you can see, um, the way we are calculating the, the energy, it's uh, pretty simple. Um, for example, one, uh, one locked max that is uh, locked for one year will have, uh, will have the attached to it an equivalent of uh, 365 points, so like uh, one point per day per max. And there will be more options to lock your max in the DEX 2.0, not for one year as, as it was uh, before, but basically you can choose to charge it or lock it for one year, two years, or four years. And Coming back to this example of uh, energy points, if you lock it for two years, you're gonna basically get twice more energy points, and if you lock it for four years, you're basically gonna get four uh, times more energy points. Um, so, think about it. Locked max is a battery. If all your max is locked, this battery is fully charged. But, on the other hand, the size of the battery matters. It is one half to have a fully charged battery, uh, that is small, is another thing to have a fully charged battery that is twice bigger or four times bigger. So, let's go very briefly to some of the features of the new uh, LockMax. Discharging. 
As mentioned, while enjoying benefits, the energy of each LCAMAX is decreasing by one energy point per day until it, it reaches naturally, organically, zero energy. But if you want to speed the discharging, you can decrease the energy of your locked max down to zero or one year or two years. This basically means that now any locked max can be unlocked at any time. You don't need to wait as it was before for one year, but there's a catch, of course. Uh, there is a so-called removal fee. So the more energy you are removing from your locked max, the higher this removal fee will be and can be up to 80% of your locked max. For example, 80% is a maximum. If you have locked max locked for four years and you want to unlock it now, you'll pay a fee of 80%. And here there is a very interesting thing. What will happen with this fee? Basically, 50% of this fee will be burned. So basically, the entire ecosystem will somehow uh, 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 get some value from s those that are exiting, and the other 50% actually will go back to all the LockMax holders that are still uh, there. <laughs> we'll talk about uh, this part a little bit later. This is part of something so-called fees pool. There are more fees that are accumulated there that it will be available to be claimable by LockMax holders each, each, uh, each week. Um, coming back to the uh, recharging part, there is a, the recharging part. Basically, uh, at any time and as, as many times you want, if you want to optimize your LockMax you hold, you can at any time recharge it. Basically, you can say, this LockMax I want to be locked for four years, and you can do it at any time. You, you can optimize uh, uh, how much energy you get, and there will be no limitation to, to recharge your, your LockMax. You don't have to wait four years and then to recharge it. You can do it every day, every minute. Probably there will be some limitation, maybe not very every minute. Uh, anyway, uh, about the unlocking, things are very clear. We remain the same. When no energy remains in your locked max, basically you can convert it back to max. Max will remain, of course, as it was, transferable and uh, uh, ex exchangeable, swappable on MyRDEX and other exchanges. Um, now, maybe the last thing I'm going to mention about the LockMax future is the transferability. Um, there is some changes here, and basically, uh, the new LockMax will no longer be transferable and will be bound. <laughs> this is something new, I know. Uh, there was a lot of discussion on this. Um, uh, basically, as I said, from a technical point of view, it's incredible what we can do with those SFTs and LCAMX. Coming back to the purpose of a locked max as it was initially designed, usually locked max should not be, you should not be able to, to sell it or to, to do uh, other stuff that, let's say, might hurt, hurt the, the ecosystem. That's why uh, we said that uh, we have the ability to design a locked max that is not transferable. However, still there will be some cases when locked max will still be transferable. And I'm going to mention three of those. One is between two wallets of the same users. Of course, we're not going to do a KYC of the user, but basically uh, the transferring locked max between two addresses will come with some constraints. I'm just going to give an example. It will have to wait 30 days, and this will be managed by a smart contract. And the destination address will also be uh, they will not be able to transfer to any other address for another 30 days. This is just an idea. So there are some use cases when your wallet is compromised. When you want to move from a hot wallet to a cold wallet, we still want to support this kind of uh, transfer of LockMax. Of course, LockMax will be transferable inside MyRDEX. You'll still be able to provide liquidity. You'll still be able to farm. You'll still be able to look, use LockMax as before. And of course, an interesting think that you'll be um, make LockMax transferable in the future is uh, for beyond the MyRDEX on some third-party application and services built by the community as long as it passes a governance vote. So basically the community will be able to... <laughs> okay. 
let's go very briefly to some of the benefits of this energy and a comparison between the old Max, old Elka Max, and the new Elka Max. And um, I'm going to start with the staking part, uh, the new staking. Basically, uh, with once Dex 2.0 goes live, users won't need to stake anymore. And uh, just by holding your locked max, uh, based on your energy, you receive more locked max. There is a difference here. In the old version, you could still uh, stake your max. This is no longer give you available. So only locked max will be available for staking. As a passive way of staking, you don't need to actually deposit those locked max as it was before. Um, there is also some uh, another thing I want to mention here is the staking rewards for this for let's say lack or locked max staking. They are going to be kept to five percent of the new emission. And the reason to uh, include this limitation is that basically the, our vision with the DEX is that we want to encourage liquidity and liquidity providers. And in the old, old model uh, of the DEX, 50% of the new emission actually was going to, to the staking part. And the staking part, although staking in general is good, is interesting, was not actually helping very much the DEX. Let's zoom out. The purpose of a DEX is to facilitate swaps, trading. This is it's the decentralized exchange, exchanging between tokens. This is the reason of a, of a DEX. Of course, in order to facilitate swapping, you need liquidity. So here we, we, we want the new emission, the inflation, if you want, of MAX to go to those who actually support the best, um, the, the DEX. We'll come back a little bit uh, for that because uh, we, uh, there are different actors on the Maya deck. So we have the liquidity providers and we also have the LockMax holders. And as you can see here, for LockMax holders, there are a lot of new benefits just by holding LockMax. Going uh, forward, the metabonding is also changing. As with the, the new staking, you no longer need to choose uh, if you want your lock max to go to the meta bonding, basically you will be automatically eligible for all the meta bonding rewards every week based on your energy. Another change here is we go, we no longer gonna support eagle holders. They will no longer receive rewards from the meta bonding. So all the meta bonding rewards go to lock max holders. <laughs> For Launchpad, I think I already mentioned, we're going to lock mess holder, we'll be able, eligible to participate in the, in the next Launchpad. Uh, another thing that we are adding that is really, really new is a so-called boosted APR. What does it mean? It's basically most of the farm, let's say the most important farms that uh, will have like a tag, a boosted farm, basically will we'll give to LockMax holders uh, more rewards on those farms based on the energy. And the same principle applied to the, to the meta staking. And then again is the fees pool I already mentioned. Uh, we are creating these fee pools. This fees pool will accumulate the removal fee, 50% of that removal fee. Also, a very interesting addition to this fees pool is 0.05% of each swap is going to this fees pool. If you know how the swap fees was before, 0.05 was burned, this remains the same, but uh, in the old order, 0.25% of each swap uh, uh, was going to the liquidity provider. Now only 0.2% will go to the liquidity provider and 0.05 will go to this fees pool that will be able to be claimed by LockMax holders. This might be look like uh, we are hurting liquidity providers, but uh, trust me, if you, if you look back at the design, it's actually very, very, very interesting. It's, it's good for everyone, because basically now we are aligning locked holders that not necessarily are liquidity providers to hold the token and be part of the success of the DEX. The more volumes will be there, of course, liquidity providers will be happy, but also anyone holding, and of course, the more energy you have, will also be part of the success. On the other hand, let's not forget the rewards, the farm rewards for liquidity providers are in locked max. If 
uh, that locked max has more utility, is more powerful, then means that for liquidity providers, that these rewards are more meaningful. And that's why we, it's like a, a balance between holders and liquidity providers that will make things very interesting. And maybe the last thing I want to mention is the governance part. Uh, the energy accumulated by an account will translate in governance power. Of course, what we, we're going to use a quadratic formula, so that we are kind of uh, the big accounts, the whales will uh, be a little bit, um, uh, will not have such much influence. But basically, once the governance will go live, the governance will take into consideration the energy of that account, and that account is translate one to one in governance power. And um, um, this is something new, and uh, once the governance goes live, uh, a lot of uh, things will be decided by the community, as mentioned before, where uh, LockMax can be transferable, uh, probably uh, how much is burned from this removal fee, uh, how much should, uh, and, uh, and other things. Um, let's talk about the token metrics. Regarding the token metrics, the new economics model um, will use emission to specifically align those who contribute with liquidity, as mentioned before, with those contributing by joining the ecosystem, by buying, holding, or locking the lock max. And once the new model goes live, the new emission of max basically drops by 3x or 65% from day one and continue to decrease with each year, as you can see. And now there is an interesting part here. At the end of the fifth year, we envision that the Governance Council will submit the following two options for LockMax holders voting. And basically is pursuing the decrease emission as planned, reaching zero reachable inflation. And what this means is that we want to ensure that sufficient uh, incentives um, for liquidity providers are there, uh, and we might uh, keep this uh, further. But it will be decided by us together. Okay, um, I think I have to click again. Okay, so um, I think about burning, we already uh, discussed this. Uh, the idea is burning mechanisms are a great way to create value by introducing scarcity. And there are several ways we intend to implement a contractionary uh, monetary policy to counterbalance the new emission and reinforce the value accrual. Most of them we already mentioned before, here is a summary. Um, maybe uh, we can move forward and uh, see what might be the next things on uh, DEX, let's call it 2.1. And um, there are some compelling features currently in research phase. Some will eventually uh, go live, some will not. Keep in mind that if you see something in this list, it's not necessarily going to be like this or at all. I'm going to mention three of those, three of these that are very, uh, for me, are really important on a personal level is the lottery for grant causes, limit orders and range orders, concentrated liquidity. If you are familiar with the Uniswap 3.0 and Curve 2.0, these are very interesting approaches that we are also looking. And the reason is, of course, a DEX with an order book might be very, very interesting and bring um, uh, the X exchange closer to some of the efficiency and speed of the centralized exchanges. Um, here also, there is a short uh, uh, screenshot with the dashboard that you are preparing for, for the next, uh, for, the for the Maya. The X exchange, thank you. Uh, as you can probably can see, yeah, uh, there are some interesting uh, things here in the dashboard uh, that actually is going to replace the accounts we have uh, now. And uh, one thing I'm going to mention is a new concept of leaks. Basically, this is a, a kind of ranking. You can see where you are compared to others. Let's not forget, Dex is a competition. The rewards are. Uh, limited, uh, the, more, uh, the more energy you have, the more you get from those rewards. So now we thought that having this concept of leagues and seeing where you are inside the league, but there will be like five leagues, it's an important thing for you to, to understand. Also there, uh, when we are talking about uh, the energy, I mentioned before, there is this concept of energy multiplier. 
based on how long your max is locked. Basically, we can translate this in a multiplier that can uh, have a value between 0x and 4x. And basically, you can optimize your max and your energy. And here, there are two concepts. You can optimize what you already have. So basically, if you don't have all your, let's say you want to, to lock your max for four years, here, you'll be able to see if there is, I don't know, in a liquidity pool, in a farm, or somewhere in your wallet, uh, some forgot, you forgot some lock max. Here, you'll be able to optimize and all the time be sure that you can have all your lock max for four years locked. On the other hand, you can also will make some recommendations based if you want to, I don't know, upgrade uh, your league or be uh, more uh, in the top, I don't know, 1% of your league, then it means uh, we can show you here more recommendation on how much energy you need in order to upgrade uh, your ranking. And this means, uh, this is a pretty interesting approach. Um, there will be other things that we're going to add, but uh, this will, uh, I will let you discover once uh, things go live. And we cannot talk about the DEX without mentioning the bridge. Uh, launch, I think we launched the bridge several uh, months ago, and it's called the uh, Ad Astra Bridge. And the bridge has a security first design and uh, is using um, um, audited smart contracts and was battle tested together with our community to ensure that all scenarios uh, are uh, validated and uh, fully explored. Uh, and the bridge is set up as a network of three layers. And this, th they are operated together with uh, our partners from Stake Capital, Everstake, P2P Staking Agency, and Istari Vision. And they are jointly actually uh, managing an infrastructure uh, of more than $10 billion worth of crypto staked assets. And our strategic infrastructure provider joined forces with us to ensure a decentralized uh, and transparent and highly available uh, passage of assets through this uh, bridge. And right now, there are around 41 million USDC and the equivalent of 24 million uh, worth of UTK bridged between Ethereum and, uh, and Elrond. Um, let's see what comes next. Um, we're going to enable support for BNB chain in addition to Ethereum. We're going to bridge more assets, Ethereum, RAP, BTC, BSD, USDT, BNB, and other assets. <laughs> and of course, this will mean that more DEX pairs are going to be added, BTC, USDC, BTC, eGold, and, and others on, uh, on the DEX. Uh, Maybe one last thing here is Ad Astra Bridge will become xbridges.com very, very soon. <laughs> so, this is it for now from me. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. We are looking forward to presenting you later today the new products we've been working on in the past year. So until now, you've seen what you probably already knew. New products are coming. So stay tuned. Um, <laughs> I'm going to invite next uh, the other Lucian from Elrontin, the better version, <laughs> thinner. Smarter, younger. So let's welcome Lucian. Thank you very much. <laughs>